Hey, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Cedric. I'm an actor, a filmmaker, a screenwriter, and a YouTube reactor. And uh, I'm sort of new here too. It's been a bit since I have been posting. It's certainly been a bit since I've reacted to Dimash. I have listened to a lot of Dimash in the meantime, but I'm excited to discover a new song from him. I'm always excited to discover a new song from him because I think he's the best singer in the world. And so getting to hear him use his voice to tell stories is always such a treasure to uh, be exposed to new music, to just hear him as as a world-class vocal athlete do what he does is is always amazing so i'm excited to do that and to be back with it before we do that though i do want to say thank you to my patrons on patreon thank you for your support thank you for making it possible for me to do these reactions to write my screenplays i finished uh, a, a brand new project uh, that was on a pretty tight deadline uh, earlier this week and so i'm very very excited about that and to uh, hopefully be able to say more about that whole thing soon. I've also got some new opportunities in the acting world coming up that uh, I have not been able to say much about, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to say more about that soon. So just stay tuned to my videos here on YouTube uh, and posts on, on my page if they pop up in your feed. Make sure you read them because there's going to be some cool stuff coming there soon and some stuff that I'm really excited to share with you guys and maybe be able to make you a part of. So keep your eyes open, keep your eyes peeled. It should be really neat. But that's not why we're here today. Today we are here to check out Dimash. This is some Samaltau. Samaltau? Samal, Samaltau. I never know how to say his titles, but I'm sure he'll say it multiple times and he's going to say it so much prettier than I ever could. So I'm excited about that. I have no idea what this is. I have no idea where this is. I believe it is live. Uh, I, I should I should do another one of his music videos soon. They're weird and I like them. This is a live performance. This was requested by my patron, one of my patrons on Patreon, Mekacha. Thank you for your support. You're great. I've always enjoyed chatting with you and your recommendations are always on point. So I'm excited to check this out. Here we go, Dimash Kundai Bergen, Samalta. That's a dope logo. It's a Kazakh folk song. Wow, this is gonna be a long video. I believe that's the Kobitz. I believe that's the same instrument that I've seen before in many of his videos, uh, which is a wonderful, wonderful instrument with such a powerful sound. The staging of this, to have them just sitting there, the light coming down from behind, it's very meditative, very ethereal. This is exactly what I would often listen to when I screenwrite. This is exactly what some of my favorite music sounds like, is this kind of droning strings that are going, but it, it, it fills the imagination and sitting in front of a mountain with the fog going behind them with the fog, which is not practical fog. That's something they're adding in post-production. Even if this was live, it's, it's AR stuff they can add, which doesn't make it bad. It means it's great, but it also means that it's not something that Dimash is breathing in. That's not getting on the instruments. That's not changing the pressure of the room, which might change the tuning. I don't know, but it's, it's, you know, it works really well to just not have it actually in the space and just be superimposing it. But I did especially notice on one of the fade-ins, 
Uh, it's like they faded into it and then they faded back out on a wide shot and all of a sudden that smoke was gone. So that's, that's, I was pretty sure it was not real before that. And then that kind of confirmed it, but it looks great. It, it gives this idea of floating, even though he's sitting on the ground, which gives him an anchor, even amid this idea of floating, this thing that could be smoke, which means destruction or fog, which means he's lost or clouds, which means he's way high up. But then the idea of lowering himself to the ground when he's so high up and meditating in that space is this whole other layer of meaning. So I think it's really, really wonderful. I like that the camera has been really focused on the instrument. It's been focused on staying wide. It's been focused on giving us a grand scale of what's happening, but it's letting our imaginations run wild with this long opening with the instrumentation that's droning, that's uh, drawing out long notes and then going tra -tra -tra. I mean, it's it's, really evocative it's pulling you in so well and this is why i love dimash is this this is just a different level uh, uh, a different level of audio storytelling beautiful Nice. So notice how his, his actions were very small at the beginning, which actually makes, I, I thought he was going to come in quieter, softer. And then it comes, Samaita! like very strong, very firm. You know, normally when he jumps to power, it's with something deeply passionate, but this just feels deeply felt. It feels very internal in his performance, which is again, a testament to his ability to tell a story. What is really interesting is how vocally he is almost impersonating the, I, what I believe is the kobits, but the stringed instrument. He's cutting it off in the same way that the instrument does when it's doing the, the runs and everything like that. What a wonderful way to tie those themes together like a little handoff, a duet. But again, he's melding himself, someone modern, someone wearing this kind of faux leather jacket sitting on the ground on a stage with a bunch of lights with this ancient mountain projected behind him, with the ancient instrument sitting behind him. He's molding his existence in a modern world in a, in a, in a, in a, in 2022. I know this is 2021, but in today's world with this ancient sound and ancient imagery and an ancient traditional folk song. Such a great way to do that and such a great way to, one, let that instrument be what introduces the song. I've watched two minutes and 32 seconds of this, and the first, I think, minute and 20 seconds, he didn't sing at all. It's almost like he's not even the lead of the song, it's the instrument. And so that respect for the music, for the tradition, for the culture, for just what this song means is really powerful to watch. And even as someone who grew up in Ohio and now lives in Rhode Island in the USA, I can sit here on the other side of the world and feel that respect because he's giving it and he's asking me to to give it also. And I, I can't help but do so. It's really, really powerful. I also like that the camera's gotten in close now so we can see his eyes. You can see that in his eyes, he's feeling the importance of this song for his culture. It's a traditional folk song. He's going back and going, this has been a song sung for a really long time. When I was in Missouri, I went on a walk in uh, Quincy, Illinois, 
with uh, Dave Croner. Dave, if you're watching, hey! And we were in some some areas where, you know, we know that uh, that indigenous peoples, First Nations peoples have been. And we know that they were there 12,000 years ago. And I've kind of been thinking about that a lot lately. Of just, just like, wow, 12,000 years of human history, of just walking right here. I went on a hike last week in Massachusetts and uh, I was climbing over some boulders and I was climbing up like rock faces and stuff. It was safe, don't worry. But just this, this sense of being in a place that's that ancient, that has so much history, that was there before humans ever arrived and that will be there long after. Uh, it really brings in this sense of existing beyond time in a way, if that makes sense. That's really exciting to watch, to hear, to see, and to know that he's living in that space is really cool. And it pulls you as the viewer into it. And you can hear it also in his voice. When he does sort of the more pop stuff that we've heard from him, stuff like Be With Me, it's very modern and his approach is modern, even though he still takes on the operatic tone. But here he's really pulling in a, an ancient sound into his voice. And it's very cool to hear. Also, his in-ear monitors, you notice that he's actually got both in. This is because the instrumentation is so specific and there's no percussive beat that's going. And I, I have a feeling that the, the whole orchestra is going off his tempo and where he's taking it, they're letting him kind of guide it. But within that, uh, you can hear that, you can see that he's also listening very, very carefully to what's happening, making sure his pitch is on, making sure everything around him is is together. He's sort of conducting it with his voice, but that's why it's so important for him to have the immediate feedback and not just trusting the acoustics of the room. In-ear monitors make a huge difference vocally because you can hear it, you can adjust in the moment instead of having to rely on the acoustics and the feedback of what you're hearing. There's too many things to keep track of in that space. And, and with him, what he sings and the way he sings is so technically refined and specific that uh, it makes a ton of sense for him to do this. And I'm also just amazed at the power he's getting while sitting on the floor cross-legged. Anyway, let's keep going. I love this overhead shot, I love that. Again, I'm not going to get the notes specific here, but when he's doing that, he kind of fell off at the end, but it's so interesting to hear him build the power behind it. The way that he adds the vibrato to it, and then he keeps going, he keeps pushing the air through. His little runs and everything that he's doing it, it, the burst of power and then the pullback to be so technically light and refined is really really beautiful to hear it's really really beautiful he is such a wonderful singer and his voice is so warm and i really like that he's just sitting on the ground and so i don't have to worry about his blocking that he's hitting certain light cues what background performers are doing. The camera's not doing anything crazy. It's not circling around him. I love that stuff. Stranger is still my favorite thing that, uh, that I've seen from him live. It's my favorite song from him. I love that. But with this, it's really just being able to sit here and enjoy his voice and the story that he's telling. And, and it's also him saying, I'm not here to distract. I'm just kind of a vessel for this story that has existed for a very, very long time. And I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. He's so good. Nice. 
Nice. I like that it's driving here. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Gosh, man, why is he so good? We're gonna re-listen to that. I'm gonna take it back to uh, let's see when did that tornado start. So we're gonna we're gonna re-listen to a chunk of that. But listen to the way that he, even when he adds vibrato, the one the one note again, it's not not specific to the note, but he goes ah, ah like when he he adds kind of a glottal approach ah, instead of just. Ah, uh, he reestablishes the sound itself, and it feels transformative. It's like there's other voices singing. Ah, uh, when he does that change to add the vibrato, attacking the new note, and he he does that throughout this section. He keeps attacking every note change. I, I, it's maybe it's not every single one of them, but he's adding more of that sound in between the the quick breath of air, the harsh cut instead of just sliding straight up to it, which we know he can do and which he does so often, here it brings more energy into it. It brings more power into it. It, it conveys this idea of yelling off a mountaintop. I am confused because I thought it said it was a traditional Kazakh song, and I'm not saying things can't be traditional since 1916, but uh, I just assumed it was older than that. It definitely feels older than that, so apologies if I was mistaken there. Uh, and I'm sure I'm going to get comments on the history of it, and I look forward to reading those because I like learning things. Boy, what power here. And then he flips up and, and he goes to Mosh, as he always does, but he goes higher into it. I like the AR. I like the adding of the, the tornado around and the lightning. It bodes with his performance. I think he was even, like, moving his hand with it, which was cool, but it's it feels like everything is responding to the song. And it's, it's still amazing that even when he does stand up, even when it does get bigger, it still feels like my attention is on the song and not him. He's still being deferential toward that history, toward the piece itself, which I love. Okay, let's keep going. Dutch angle. Right there. Hear that? Yeah. Then he pulls it back. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that. I also really love the way the orchestra builds throughout the piece. It builds with his voice. It builds with his range as he's taking it up. We start to add more percussion. We start to add so many other things to the piece in general. This is great. He's great. I really liked this song. I think I really like the songs that are associated with Kazakhstan because his, was it Kargamai, the music video, which is my favorite from him. I just, I'll leave a note if it's not because I always forget the actual name of it. But I, I just, there's this real sense of other voices kind of feeding into his, this, this sense of, 
um, I don't know, just this ancient tone when when he really leans into, especially this, the songs that he associates with Kazakhstan, or that he asks us to associate with Kazakhstan. But he is so versatile. And, and this just felt really, really, um, it felt really proud of his story and of where he's from while still contemplating the fear and the anxiousness and the power and, and the history and the complexities of, of the story he was telling about being a soldier, about what it all led him to this moment and what lies ahead. Uh, really, really well told. And this cold, bleak mountaintop behind him with the smoke and with the tornado and the dangers and the natural um, order of life and death and who gave birth to him and will death await him in this soldier's life. It's all right there and it's, it's really, really well told. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please drink lots of water, fix your posture. Please take care of yourselves. You're great. And I'll see you next time. But until then, be well.